Now joining me with more on the ongoing crisis between Israel and Gaza, fellow with the Jewish People Policy Institute, or JISS, and expert on Israel and Middle East security, IDF Reserves Major Dan Pfefferman, and former commander of the Telenov Air Force Base, Brigadier General in the Reserves, Israel Relik Shafir. Thank you both so much for being with us. Now, how does Israel confirm terror targets when mixed with civilian targets? Dan, I'll start with you. Sure. Um, so there's a, a process by which uh, the IDF goes through assuring targets. Uh, first of all, it has to have clear and hard intelligence before it confirms uh, strike targets. There's a process where the commanders, strategists, international law experts, and intelligence officers are all sitting together to look at both the operational worth of a target, but also the legal and moral aspects of it. And there's also windows, strike windows, when you can, when you can't, and everything is taken into account the efficacy of the potential strike versus the risks of taking such a strike. And each one is taken into careful consideration uh, before the IDF uh, proceeds uh, with uh, executing that strike. Well, so going to you, Relik, there have been many casualties reported in Gaza, allegedly over 60 civilians, including many children. Meanwhile, we know that Israel makes phone calls, uses roof knockers, drops leaflets, uh, uh, and other such operations to minimize civilian casualties. But if Israel goes through all of these hoops, how are there so many casualties and how does Israel hit its targets if it's also giving advance notice ahead of all these strikes? Well, I think uh, we should ask, how, how uh, do we have so, so, such few casualties rather than how many? Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. The metro system, so-called metro system, the underground tunnels that Hamas uses, uh, when we target an area that could be clear of, of any civilians and hit the uh, tunnels, the tunnels may cave in and inflict damage on buildings under which it passes hundreds of meters away. Now, the buildings may have poor infrastructure to begin with, cement infrastructure, but they're weakened by the tunnels that go underneath those buildings when the uh, explosion does take place. So these are, this is a collateral damage that you cannot know ahead of time. But Hamas, when they uh, built those tunnels, this is exactly what they wanted, was to uh, 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 safeguard those tunnels under the buildings. Uh, other examples, they fire rockets from civilian areas. So just think of a pilot who's got a, who's targeting now a missile which is set to go off against Ashdod or Ashkelon or Tel Aviv. It's got it, it has it at its site and it can take it away and prevent that missile from firing. Uh, obviously he will bomb that target, but if that target, if that missile is launched launch from an area that close by there may be civilians hiding in a building, then the result is that Hamas in its actions and its, in its tactics actually is um, uh, committing atrocities against its own people. We know that that had taken place quite a few times. I don't know what the spread of the casualties between the different uh, uh, happenings are, but I can assure you that none of the pilots who released weapons will do so knowingly uh, if there are uh, uninvolved un, uh, civilians in the area that might be hurt. All right, now, I, I want to follow up with you, Relik. What is the best way, because we have Netanyahu saying that we're going to continue this operation until, until we've hit what we want to hit, uh, until we've made Hamas regret starting this latest escalation. How far is far enough? What, what will it take to keep Hamas from violence long term? Is that military necessarily, or is there some sort of incentive that maybe can be used? I think militarily, if we carry on in this operation for, uh, for a while, that will uh, uh, either deter Hamas or lengthen the time span that we can uh, keep them under control just like uh, from the uh, 19, 19, uh, 2014 uh, operation. But if uh, goodwill on Israel's side, the Arab countries, some of the Arab countries that we have be befriended in the last year or two, uh, the European community, 
create a program with Egypt that gives the Palestinians in Gaza a ray of hope of building their lives um, other than fighting, then we will have a tit per tat uh, offer to, uh, to Gaza so that they will have an option to look at the bright side of things rather than just another war. So uh, this will take a lot of goodwill, stamina, uh, and a coalition between um, some of the uh, uh, countries that are not usually on, on best of terms, such as Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, Egypt, etc. Uh, and there had there had been a floating idea of uh, having the Gaza Strip stretched out to El Arish along uh, the northern uh, northern Sinai. So there are ideas floating around that need uh, some push that are uh, a kind of a, I would say, uh, the carrot side of things rather than the whip. So uh, um, I think there are things out there. And I think maybe this particular campaign will be an impetus to use them as something to give uh, the, the Gazans some hope, and they do deserve some hope.